Hello Year 7, welcome to your last lesson on Coraline for this week. Don't forget that your fourth lesson of the week is your reading lesson and if you go to the English website next to the remote learning tab is a reading tab and on there are lots of examples of books and two free books now from the Oak Academy website um, in case you don't have any books at home because you've read them all. So reminder of your top tips and where to go if you need help and a reminder to hand your work in last lesson as well so you've got all your three lessons worth of work to hand in if you've been saving it up for this lesson okay let's go today's entitled then chapter seven Coraline is trapped pause me and write the date and title neatly and underlined please thank you Right, first of all, a quick little recap of what happened in chapter six. Can you remember? I want you to pause me and I want you to write some bullet points of what you can remember happened so far in chapter six. OK, what did we get then? Well, she's trapped on the other side of the door. Can't get out mother is becoming more and more evil remember what we compared her to last lesson medusa she's made the world to try and trap Coraline. i think the cat compared it to a spider's web at one point she has taken her parents and won't tell Coraline where they are and she has pushed Coraline through the mirror and trapped her there to teach her some manners. Hmm, not a very nice way to learn a lesson, is it? Okay, so now we know where we're up to. Let's move on to chapter seven. Somewhere inside her, Coraline could feel a huge sob welling up. And then she stopped it before it came out. She could took a deep breath and let it go. She put her hands out to touch the space in which she was imprisoned. It was the size of a broom cupboard, tall enough to stand in or sit in, not wide enough or deep to lie down in. One wall was glass and it felt cold to the touch. She went around the tiny room a second time, running her hands over every surface that she could reach, feeling for doorknobs or switches or concealed catches, some kind of way out, and found nothing. A spider scuttled over the back of her hand and she chucked back a shriek. But apart from the spider, she was alone in the cupboard, in the pitch black dark. Then a hand touched something that felt for all the world like somebody's cheek and lips small and cold and a voice whispered in her ear hush and shush say nothing for the peckler might be listening Coraline said nothing she felt a cold hand touch her face fingers running over it like the gentle beat of a moth's wings another voice hesitant and so faint Coraline wondered if she were imagining it said art thou Art thou alive? Yes, whispered Coraline. Poor child, said the first voice. Who are you? whispered Coraline. Names, 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 said another voice, all far away and lost. The names are the first things to go after the breath has gone and the beating of the heart. We keep our memories longer than our names. I still keep pictures in my mind of my governess on some May morning carrying my hoop and stick and the sun, morning sun behind her and all the tulips bobbing in the breeze. But I've forgotten the name of my governess and of the tulips too. I don't think tulips have names, said Coraline. They're just tulips. Perhaps, said the voice sadly, but I've always thought that these tulips must have had names. They were red and orange and red and red and orange and yellow, like the embers in the nursery fire of a winter's evening. I remember them. The voice sounded so sad that Coraline put out her hand to the place where it was coming from and she found a cold hand. 
she squeezed it tightly. Her eyes were beginning to get used to the darkness. Now Coraline saw, or imagined she saw, three shapes, each as faint and pale as a moon in the daytime sky. They were the shapes of children about her own size. The cold hand squeezed her hand back. Thank you, said the voice. Are you a girl? asked Coraline, or a boy? There was a pause. When I was small, I wore skirts and my hair was long and curled, it said doubtfully. But now that you ask, it does seem to me that one day they took my skirts and gave me breeches and cut my hair. Tain't something we give mine to, said the first of the voices. Mm, a boy, perhaps, then, continued the one whose hand she was holding. I believe I was once a boy. And it glowed a little more brightly in the darkness of the room behind the mirror. What happened to you all? asked Coraline. How did you come here? She left us here, said one of the voices. She stole our hearts and she stole our souls and she took our lives away and she left us here and she forgot about us in the dark. You poor thing, said Coraline. How long have you been here? Oh, so very long a time, said a voice. Aye, time beyond reckoning, said another voice. I walked through the scullery door, said the voice of the one that thought it might be a boy, and I found myself back in the parlour, but she was waiting for me. She told me she was my other mamma, but I never saw my true mamma again. Flee, said the very first of the voices. Another girl, Coraline fancied, flee while there's still air in your lungs and blood in your veins and warmth in your heart. Flee while you still have your mind in your soul. I'm not running away, said Coraline. She has my parents. I came to get them back. Ah, but she'll keep you here while the days turn to dust and the leaves fall and the years pass one after the next like the tick, tick, ticking of a clock. No, said Coraline, she won't. There was silence then in the room behind the mirror. Peradventure, said a voice in the darkness. If you could win your mamma and your papa back from the bedlam, you could also win free, win free our souls. Has she taken them? asked Coraline, shocked. Aye, and hidden them. That is why we could not leave here when we died. She kept us. And she fed on us until now we're nothing left of ourselves, only snake skins and spider husks. Find our secret hearts, young mistress. And what will happen to you if I do? asked Coraline. The voices said nothing. And what is she going to do to me? she said. The pale figures pulsed faintly. She could imagine that they were nothing more than after images, like the glow left by a bright light in your eyes after the lights go out. It doth not hurt, whispered one faint voice. She will take your life and all you are and all you carest for, and she will leave you with nothing but mist and fog. She'll take your joy, and one day you'll awake and your heart and your soul will have gone. A husk you'll be. A wisp you'll be, and a thing no more than a dream on waking, or a memory of something forgotten. Hollow, whispered the third voice. Hollow, 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 hollow. You must flee, sighed a voice faintly. I don't think so, said Coraline. I tried running away and it didn't work. She just took my parents. Can you tell me how to get out of this room? If we knew, then we would tell you. Poor thing, said Coraline to herself. She sat down. She took off her sweater and rolled it up and put it behind her head as a pillow. She won't keep me in the dark forever, said Coraline. She brought me here to play games. Games and challenges, the cat said. I'm not much of a challenge here in the dark. She tried to get comfortable twisting and bending herself to fit the cramped space behind the mirror. Her stomach rumbled. She ate her last apple, taking the tiniest bites, making it last as long as she could. When she had finished, she was still hungry. Then an idea struck her and she whispered, when she comes to let me out, 
Why don't you three come with me? We wish that we could, they sighed to her in their barely their voices, but she has our hearts in her keeping. Now we belong to the dark and to the empty places. The light would shrivel us and burn. Oh, said Coraline. She closed her eyes, which made the darkness darker, and she rested her head on the rolled up sweater and she went to sleep. And as she fell asleep, she thought she felt a ghost kiss her cheek tenderly and a small voice whisper into her ear, a voice so faint it was barely there at all, a gentle wispy nothing of a voice so hushed that Coraline could almost believe she was imagining it. Look through the stone, it said to her, and then she slept. Okay, so what I want you to do now is just to make sure, because that's a strange chapter, there's some strange happenings going on in there. I want us to make sure we've understood that because that last moment, did you notice what it said to her? Did you spot the fairy tale convention? The stone? Mm hmm. OK, so I'm going to bring up seven questions I want you to look at and I'm going to talk through them first. Then I'm going to leave them on the screen for you to answer and then we'll have a look at your answers. OK, so question number one. Why do you think Coraline doesn't allow herself to sob when she is at the other side of the mirror? So don't forget we've been looking at fairy tale heroes. All right, and Coraline is our hero. So think about that when you're considering your answer. Question number two. What sort of person does it sound like when it says, art thou, art thou alive? And there's a clue to think about the type of words they are using. Question number three, and you might need to go back in the video to have a look at the text. So depending on what your answer was for number two, can you spot any other clues that support your idea for answer number two? Number four, you can use Google for this if you don't know, look it up. What's a scullery? And then, what does it tell you that the children used to do? Mm -hmm. Number five, why are the children behind the mirror? What are they doing there? How can she help them? Does she have to do? And how is she going to escape from behind the mirror and find her parents? Now, if you can, in any of these answers, include any short quotations that would be fantastic year seven. OK, it should take you about 15, 20 minutes to complete these questions properly. All right. So don't rush them. And if you need to go back through the video to the point of the text to have a look up for some answers, you can do that. OK, so pause this video and answer those questions in full sentences, writing them carefully. No short answers. OK, off you go. Okay, so let's have a look how we got on and I want you to compare your answers to mine and see um, if you've got some of the same ideas. Don't worry if your answers are slightly different. You can always adjust them. You can always think, well, I've got a good answer. It's as good, but it's slightly different. So question number one, why doesn't she allow herself to sob when she's at the other side of the mirror? My answer was in a full sentence and that's what I wanted from you. Caroline doesn't allow herself to sob because she wants to be brave. Those fairy tale heroes don't just run away at the first sign of danger when they get scared. She also might not want the other mother to hear her sobbing at the other side of the mirror. Now, some of you might have referred to her father's story. Did any of you write anything about the father and the wasps? That's something you could have written about. So she might have learned that sometimes you are really brave when you're scared. Mm, maybe that's why she told us about that story and her father saving her from the wasps. If you remember that from earlier in the story. OK, well done. Question number two, then. What sort of person does it sound like when it says, art thou alive? And I asked you to think about the types of words. 
Well, they're really old fashioned words. We don't say art and thou anymore, unless we're reading some Shakespeare, which you will do later on in your studies at King James's school. And you certainly will have read some Shakespeare so far. So these words make me think that they're either really old or they're from a long time ago. Which is certainly mysterious, isn't it? Okay. Question number three. What are the clues then? So if they're old fashioned or they're from a really long time ago, what else could we see in the text that supported this idea? Well, some of the clues are that the voice talks about old fashioned games like hoop and stick. I don't think we play hoop and stick anymore. And having long memories. You might have spotted the bit about the governess. We don't have governesses anymore. We're babysitters, but we don't call them governesses. That was somebody who would live in your house and teach you at the same time. It's like a living teacher. Can you imagine that? It also talks about when it was small, as if it was a long time ago. OK, so notice my embedded quotation in that answer as well. Well done if you've managed to do that in any of your answers so far. OK, let's have a look at the next four. OK, what was a scullery? Did you look that up? Did you ask somebody in your house? It's a small kitchen, often at the back of a big house, used for dirty work. It's where you'd wash up and wash all the pots and the pans and the boots and that kind of things. And it's often where the servants would work. So it makes me think that the children were servants. And a long, long time ago, children of that age would work. They wouldn't be at school. OK, well done if you found out what a scullery was. It's not where you put schools. Why are the children behind the mirror? They are being kept behind the mirror because the other mother stole them to be her children. And when they died, their souls went behind the mirror. So they're like Coraline, but they're dead. And that's where their souls have gone and now their souls are trapped. So we don't want Coraline to end up like them, do we? <clears throat> And of course, now it's Coraline's job to help them as well. Her journey's got a little bit more complicated. How can she help them? Well, if she wins back her parents, they say this will help free their souls because their souls are trapped. And the final question was how is she going to escape from behind the mirror and find her parents? Well, when she goes to sleep, she heard that whispered voice, a very, very quiet whispered voice that told her she should look through the stone. Maybe this is how she can escape and find her parents. So just check your answers, Year 7. Make sure they're all in a full sentence. It's really important you continue to write in full sentences and you don't just write notes. OK, if you have written just notes, please rewrite your answers in a full sentence. Check the details that are in my answers and see if you've got as much in yours and feel free to improve them. OK. Well done. That's the last lesson for this week on Coraline, but make sure you're doing your reading for your fourth lesson. And don't forget, you can log on to Accelerated Reader and do the quizzes as well from home. OK, well done, Year 7. Very proud of all your work so far. Make sure you upload it. All right. From my talking cat and me, I will see you next week.